Newly elected Milwaukee Mayor Cavalier Johnson grew up as one of 10 siblings in Milwaukee's 53206 zip code, known for its high rates of poverty, crime, and incarceration. Johnson was not going to be another statistic. He graduated from Bayview High School and the University of Wisconsin-Madison. He rose through local government and became the Milwaukee Common Council president. Johnson is now the first elected African-American mayor of Milwaukee. Mayor Johnson told me about his neighborhood-focused approach, what it will take to create family-supporting jobs, and how improving public safety is the responsibility of everyone in the community. Mayor Johnson, thank you so much for being with us on Connect MKE. Absolutely, I'm happy to be here with you. Great. Well, you know, one of the things that happened during your inauguration was that you talked about how this is a new chapter for Milwaukee, one that really depends heavily and is built on cooperation. What does that new chapter look like? It, it, it means collaboration. It means coming together. It means new partnerships. It means finding common ground, right? Um, you know, anybody can find things that they disagree on. You know, it takes a, a, a stronger sense of urgency and leadership to find areas where we agree, even if, you know, there are, you know, these opposing forces, especially po opposing political forces. So that's what I want to focus on, because uh, all of us have a responsibility to move the ball forward, right? I, I always say that the, the key word in uh, pr progressive is progress, and that's what we should be striving for in Milwaukee. You've also talked about investing more in Milwaukee's neighborhoods, and that is a little bit different from what we've seen in the past, where we've seen a lot of emphasis on downtown projects, big projects downtown. What does it look like? What do you mean when you talk about investing in neighborhoods? And, and what can people who live in neighborhoods expect to see in terms of city investment? Yeah, I'm very supportive of continued investment uh, downtown. But I also think that it's important to realize those sort of uh, investments in neighborhoods as well. And so when I talk about neighborhoods and investments, I'm talking about having people-centered development, people-centered uh, investments in our neighborhoods. I'm talking about working to attract job opportunities, family support and job opportunities as well, to areas in Milwaukee that just have seen disinvestment when uh, a number of those heavy manufacturing jobs dried up here and they went to right-to-work states in the South or they went overseas for cheap labor. Those are the sorts of things that are gonna help us to grow the population of the city and create a better quality of life for the people that live in Milwaukee. I want Milwaukee to be a city that is open for business. I want for us to remove you know, red tape. I want us to be friendly to businesses that are trying to open up and create new opportunities for our citizens to uh, have family supporting job opportunities. And I keep saying family supporting job opportunities, and I'm saying that for a reason, right? Is because if we want our neighborhoods to be stable, if we want for the, the, the parents to provide stability for their kids so the response is different than what we see today when they go out into the streets or into the schools, then we have to make sure that those families and those neighborhoods are stable, right? And so when it comes to Century City or any place, uh, our, our uh, historic commercial corridors throughout the city, I wanna provide you know, opportunities for them to grow and for them to thrive. So you know, my administration is actively going to work uh, to draw new investment to, to Century City to create family supporting job opportunities there. We're actively going to work uh, to make sure that individuals know entrepreneurs or new business owners, that the city has resources. And it's not just the city, it's the state, it's the county, it's you know, other partners uh, in the uh, economic development sphere they have resources to help them to grow businesses on our commercial corridors. I want for places like uh, Sherman Phoenix or uh, the Bronzeville Collective or Crossroads Collective or the new food hall that's coming up uh, on the west side uh, near Wauwatosa on North Avenue to be able to grow clientele, uh, tap into the resources that we have here uh, in government and with our partners and then spin out into our commercial corridors into their own brick and mortar place and allow for another business to come in their spot, grow and do the same thing and keep spinning them out and keep spinning them out, creating new jobs and new opportunity. Those are the sort of things that we wanna do in order to improve our commercial corridors and create job opportunities for the people who live you know, on either side of those commercial corridors. One of the things that is important is people take a look at neighborhoods to invest in, whether they're investing as, as homeowners or, or, or residents, renters, 
um, or they're bringing in a business. Is this this matter of people feeling and being safe in the communities that they choose? As you well know, Milwaukee's on a record pace, pace for homicides. We've seen an increase in the number of non-fatal shootings. Reckless driving is really almost a plague in certain parts of, of our city. What are some of the things that are being done to make sure that people are safe in neighborhoods where they choose to invest? Yeah, that's a great question. And public safety is certainly top of mind for me because I know it's top of mind for the people that I represent, citizens across Milwaukee. You know, when I was running for this office, um, it didn't matter uh, where I was in the city. It didn't matter what side of town I was on. It could be the, the far northwest side or the far south side. I could be downtown uh, talking to someone in the business community. And everybody's number one concern is public safety. Uh, and you know these issues around shootings, both fatal and non-fatal, as well as uh, reckless driving, are top of mind for the people who uh, live, play, and work uh, here in our city. And so there are a number of things that we're doing to address the issue. Uh, already, uh, since uh, I've been elected mayor, uh, we have gone uh, and joined with the chief uh, to speak with a number of recruits, nearly 60 of them, uh, that have taken the oath and later this year we'll be out on the streets uh, patrolling the city and working to make it safer. Uh, even back when I was council president, uh, to the same point, uh, we worked to make sure that uh, we passed a, a COPS grant that put uh, on the streets, I think they're already out there, uh, a number of police officers who are diverse, who largely live in the city, they're men, they're women, they're, they're young, they're African American, they're Latino, they're Asian. They are reflective of the city of Milwaukee, and so they're out there. We're working with our Office of Violence Prevention in order to get out there, uh, and there are a number of things that we've done, uh, even you know to this date, uh, trying to work with that office in order to get uh, me and some of our uh, partners out there to interrupt violence before it begins. Uh, we just worked with the police department, uh, the Fire and Police Commission, uh, and the Department of Public Works to institute a new towing policy so that if folks are driving recklessly uh, in the streets, the police now have an additional tool that they're able to use to, what I say, what I say you know, take them out the game. You know, if they don't want to obey the rules of the road and they want to endanger the greater public safety, well then take their means of doing that away. Um, and so when we, the, the day that we uh, launched that program, uh, the first day, we already had uh, taken seven cars uh, off the street, recovered uh, at least one gun and drugs uh, as well. So it's already uh, having an effect. Um, there'll be other changes that we make uh, to the roadway, to the physical roadway as well in terms of street design. And all of this coincides with my uh, Stand for Safer Streets plan that I released uh, before taking office here, where we're working to make sure that we change the way that the street uh, is laid out to have, again, protected bike lanes, which become an inhibitor for folks that are driving recklessly, but also implementing curb extensions and bump outs and the like that stop people from doing things like passing on the right, which is the most egregious reckless driving behavior that we see and know uh, in the city of Milwaukee. So we're actively working on a whole host of, uh, of, of issues around all those, all those points, uh, shootings, both fatal, non-fatal, as well as reckless driving. And one last point on the, um, on the shootings, right? Because we don't control gun law uh, at the local right. level. We're just left, you know, trying to pick up the pieces. And our police department does a great job uh, with doing that. So this is goes back to the first point where we need greater partnerships with the state. We need the state government to be our partners in order to put common sense solutions in place in order to address the issue. I, I would hope that they recognize uh, in Madison. I think that they do that there obviously is a problem. I mean, just this year, I mean, we've had a number of children killed, um, including not terribly long ago, a, a 10 year old girl who was shot and a 13 year old girl, her sister, who was killed. Uh, we had a 16 year old killed. I think the first day of the year we had uh, a, a child under 10 who was shot. Uh, we had three law enforcement officers just this year uh, who were shot. So obviously there's a problem, but we need the state to be a part of the solution with us as well. There are certain things that you can do with the help of the state that the city can do with the help of the state. What do you need citizens to do? Because there's only so much. We can't have police officers on every corner. What responsibilities do citizens have and what would you like to see us do to help make Milwaukee safer? You're absolutely right. 
you know, 100% correct. Uh, you, we can't have a police officer on every single corner. That's just not possible. It's not sustainable. And so we need our citizens to be a part of the solution too. Look, the first line of defense, the first line of public safety isn't police. It isn't the courts. It's us. It's the people who have those relationships with the, with the, the, the people who are pulling triggers in the city on a Saturday night, right? You know, we have a sense that somebody is likely to do something wrong. You know, these are people that we know. These are people that we're related to. So even if it's somebody that uh, we do have a personal relationship with, we need to discourage them. And if they won't listen to that discouragement, then we need to report them. We need to step up. And so I tell people constantly across the city, you know, uh, the Milwaukee Police Department has an anonymous tip line and I encourage people to use it. If you're not comfortable talking to police, even anonymously, Crime Stoppers has an anonymous tip line. So I encourage people to use that. If you're not comfortable talking to police, if you're not comfortable comfortable talking to Crime Stoppers, then our Office of Violence Prevention, uh, you can report things anonymously there. Uh, if you're not com comfortable talking to any of those sources, then reach out to your local elected official, reach out to your to your alderman, you know, reach out to the mayor's office, and we can anonymously, uh, on your behalf, report that information to the authorities in order to get things solved. Look, things won't get better in our neighborhoods unless people actually realize and understand that these neighborhoods belong to them. You know, nobody wants violence erupting in their neighborhoods, and so we have to act like it. And we have to hold people who do those things accountable. And we can't be afraid, Denise, to, to, to say that. We cannot be afraid to say that there should be accountability when people do bad things in our neighborhoods. Because guess what? If you allow them to take an inch, and for those parents out there like I am, you understand this very well, um, if you allow you know, folks to take an inch, well, guess what they're gonna do? They're gonna take a mile. If you don't report them and stop this stuff before it even happens, well, then guess what they're gonna do? They're gonna get up the next day and they're gonna hurt somebody else and hurt somebody else and hurt somebody else. But we collectively as a community can put a stop to that. We just have to, we just have to, to, to understand our own power and reclaim our neighborhoods. One of the things you've talked about very openly is the fact that when you were growing up, you had challenges that were, were taking place. Um, what kind of difference, what kind of impact do you think it would have had on an 11 or 12 year old Cavalier Johnson if he would have seen an African American mayor at that age? And, and what kind of influence do you want to have on young people today? Well, you know, uh, I, I think that representation is important. I think it's important for, especially in a city like this, that's made up majority of people of color, to be able to see their own reflection, especially if they're kids, uh, in positions like this. Uh, not quite 11 years old, but I can, I can recall um, walking up and down North Avenue when I was a teenager. And you know, my thought at the time as, as a teenager was, look, you know, the windows are busted out. The doors are boarded up. When I go into a, a business, you know, nobody is in there that looks like me. Um, that begins to seep into your psyche and you begin to think that that's normal. Well, we can't normalize those things. And so uh, I, I think that a younger me, seeing an African-American mayor at the time, uh, that is what would be normal to me. You know, I, I think about my own you know, uh, interactions with, with, uh, with some kids, especially kids that are my son's age. And is it a, a big deal that there's an African-American mayor uh, in Milwaukee? Yeah, but for them, when they were born, Barack Obama was president, you know? And so to them, they're like, yeah, that's great, but shouldn't that be a normal thing? Shouldn't we have that sort of representation? You know, I think that's, that's incredibly powerful because when people can see the reflection, then they know what the possibilities are. My father uh, told me when I was a kid uh, that I had to get off my block. You know, as a kid, I think he, I thought he was talking about my actual, you know, the four corners of my actual city block. Uh, but he was talking about expanding your horizons because for too many kids and for too many kids of color in Milwaukee, your whole world is the, the four points on a block, right? It's home, school, the corner store, and a relative's house. That's your whole world. And if you don't see beyond that, then you get trapped into this pattern and kids will be what they see. And if you live in a neighborhood like I did growing up, you know, and there's crime and there's death and there's destruction and there's drugs, it's easy to get trapped in that. And so if you expand your horizons and they see the representation in places like this, 
then they know the possibilities.